19 measure passes. Members, we're moving to file item 92. That's AB 713. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 713 by Assembly Member Weber and others and actually into kindergarten. Dr. Weber. Yes, Mr. Speaker and members, AB 713 is mandatory kindergarten. In 2010, California adopted its Common Core Standards that talked about a K-12 through curriculum that standards needed to be met to address the achievement gap and give children the skills and knowledge necessary to be global thinking. I want to emphasize that although these standards are K-12, through kindergarten, as many are shocked to find out throughout the state, is not one of the mandatory uh, grade levels in the state of California. The legislature has made early education a priority over the last few years, and this must include kindergarten, where students become better prepared and academic, academically and socially for the first grade. What we learned from last year's experience, as we know we went forward, is that we've added a provision in this bill now that was raised by the opponents that add a section that specifically states that this bill does not stop a parent from applying to homeschool their children instead of enrolling them in traditional kindergarten. This bill is critical and, and, and essential in terms of the pattern and the continuity of education for children. Most folks don't realize that there is a curriculum in first grade that is based on knowledge in kindergarten. So this bill then would at least say that, we, that students are required to go to kindergarten. If they choose not to go to kindergarten and the parents opt out of it, they must at least cover the curriculum that's there and become a part of homeschooling for their children through the kindergarten grade. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Dr. Weber. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote. Eyes 56, nose 15. Measure passes. Members, we're moving to file item 102. That's AB 953. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 953 by Assembly Member Weber and actually laying this racial profiling. Dr. Weber, you may again open. Yes, Mr. Speaker and members, I present to you today AB 953, which is a data collection bill collecting information concerning what we call racial profiling. As we are aware of the fact that we have, most of us have spent a significant amount of time this year dealing with the issue uh, through various workshops, seminars, hearings that have been held here at the Capitol, with a recognition even by law enforcement themselves of something called racial bias that we all become victims of racial bias, and hopefully we don't act on that and begin and get engaged in racial profiling. This bill that we present today, as we look at the numerous issues that have happened throughout California, gets us into a better position of being able to collect data in terms of what is really happening in California. Right now, most of us look at the information and it's anecdotal information in terms of what is happening. And so therefore, we're, not, we're limited in terms of the kind of information we have regarding the incidents that are occurring in California at this time. The only way for us to move from discourse about profiling and, to, and, and the rhetoric associated with it is to build upon a rational evidence-based policing strategy that allays community concern and is to collect data, to collect data about law enforcement communities and their interactions with those communities. A AB 953 would not only create and satisfy the void that we currently have, but would modernize California's prohibition against profiling so that it aligns its guidelines with that of the Department of Justice and the police and the President's task force. According to our legislative analyst office, the, this reform is necessary because California's current definition of, pro, of profiling is over vague and law enforcement agencies have resisted following it because it's difficult to implement. The pursuant to the recommendations by the Police Executive Re Research Forum, the Office of Community Oriented Policing, and the U.S. Department of Justice, AB 953 would create, in addition to the collection of data, would create a racial and identity profiling advisory board. This multi-stake group, a board that would have diverse voices of experts, would include social scientists, policing experts, representatives of law enforcement, civil rights organizations, the legislature, and various other communities to talk about solutions of curbing racial profiling and positively advancing police relations. During this process, we have taken a number of recommendations from the various committees that have come forward and the various entities that are there, so that this now becomes a much simpler bill in terms of being able to answer and to respond to the issues that are there. We've limited the number of data points that, that groups can talk about. In other words, the information we're collecting now is really information on date, time, and location of stop, 
gender or race or age of the person stopped, the reason for the stop, the result of the stop, and whether or not the search was conducted, and if so, was anything found. This data then can also, in working with the uh, various agencies, we've worked to make sure that the data can easily be collected in a method that they have themselves and might, might not just to say be very cumbersome, but may involve them simply reporting their data either to the dispatch or on their computer or whatever that may be. It is extremely important as we talk about dealing with the issue of racial profiling, that we move beyond just the, the anecdotal conversation, but we really move to the issue where we get the information that we need and that we have an agency, an organization that can deal with the data to move it forward to improve the kind of training that's necessary by our post organization and others that would work with this to get us beyond racial profiling. So I I'm, I'm, uh, respectfully ask for your I vote on this very, very important bill, AB 953, dealing with the issue of racial profiling. Mr. Jones Sawyer, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, as chair of the California Legislative Black Caucus, in strong support of AB 953 and our colleague in the California Legislative Black Caucus, um, unfortunately, I, all, I know all too well the impact of racial profiling and its effect on communities of color. It is simply unjust and un-American that African Americans and Latinos are stopped by police more often than any other racial group. Although this information is common knowledge for black and brown people, current data does not show us the frequency or purpose of these stops. AB 953 is a simple step in the right direction. It will not only help to define racial profiling, but for the first time require police departments to report on the demographics and reasons for each stop. My friends, and I do mean my friends in law enforcement and in public safety, um, pride themselves on the fact that all stops that they make are made justly and for probable cause, and that they believe that the additional information required will take much more time of the officer and result in less service to the public. I disagree. In fact, I think it will help law enforcement, especially now when the public believes that there is something dramatically wrong with their interactions with people of color. I think identifying what's going on in these stops, using the additional time will help, I mean help, get rid of the 1% that is dragging law enforcement's name into the mud. And we need to get to them and we need to rid ourselves of them. This bill, this bill is the first step in getting to the one percenters that are giving law enforcement a bad name. Hopefully, the true realization of the problem and disparity in police stops can re result in true, yes, true systematic change within law enforcement. Thank you, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Jones Sawyer. Mr. Chavez, you are recognized. I know that this year has been very troubling for a lot of Americans, seeing what's going across the country as far as uh, uh, policing. But I think the issue is more of an issue of leadership and responsibility within our police forces, and quite frankly, in our local communities. Having, like many of you, served in a city council, um, the best way for policing in communities of color or communities that are suffering through economics, it's best to have a community policing force where police officers actually are part of the community, sponsoring soccer games and Little League and everything else, and actually a part of the community. I think this uh, backlash that we're going through right now, uh, labeling uh, police officers as part of the problem, uh, isn't helpful. I would really enjoy hearing from our member from Elk Grove, being a, um, a minority and a police officer in his position on this. My point is that we can collect data but as you know, many times data is just information provided, does not really give you knowledge and does not really give you the decision points on what you want to do to move forward. I'm also troubled with this bill when I noticed 
that um, this committee that we're going to set up, is that this profile advisory board committee we're actually going to set up is going to have four members of the legislative ethnic LGBT caucuses. A question to the author, please. Without objection. So, member, uh, what was the thought process in focusing on the legislative minority caucuses? I assume it's the black, Latino, Jewish, API, and J LGBT caucuses. What was the thought process to just target those legislators to be part of this board? Dr. Weber, you may address that now or in your clothes. I can address it in my clothes. You may continue, Mr. Chavez. Because when I looked at it, I thought, you know, we in the body here need to all be, uh, understand that we all represent different parts of communities. And quite frankly, these caucuses have not been very bipartisan, one in particular. If we want to be fair and give a fair look at how to make our community safe, to take a group and put them on as a, evaluating this, to me, is profiling in its own and does not solve the problem. So it's for that reason, as a assembly member here who's been in California, who's raised in Los Angeles, I can tell you um, the solution to this is actually in your local communities, how we interact with each other every day, and how we show love and respect for all people. Uh, bringing a political solution to this is not going to help. It's going to put us at odds with an element that is critical to our safety, and that's our public servants. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Ridley Thomas. You are recognized. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, colleagues, I rise in support of AB 953 because I recognize that uh, as a member of the Legislative Black Caucus and uh, a member of that demographic that finds themselves interacting with the police more often and sometimes negative interactions, that without state and sometimes federal oversight, we don't get resolution. We get civil unrest. We get discord in communities. We get strained police community relations. And data has to underlie informed public policy decisions. So for those who may be concerned about overreaction or uh, making uh, uh, targets of uh, law enforcement in this process, data informs that process. It's the same with various types of technology innovations that we want to see uh, in policing and in law enforcement. If we have more accountability, more transparency, that which everyone on this floor believes in, then we can better inform our public administration and public decisions. I am one who supports safe communities, who likes to see law enforcement treated with dignity and respect and expects the same of them in every community in which they find themselves. Public safety is imperative to the people that I represent in the region that I represent, as it is across the entire state. This bill, AB uh, 953, simply moves the ball forward on what has been a long trudge towards justice and accountability in police community interactions. With that, I would thank the gentlewoman for advancing this issue, recognizing it is a very difficult issue. It is often a thankless task to engage on these bills because you have meritorious arguments on both sides. It is extremely intense and difficult. So I applaud your efforts, ma'am, and I would uh, respectfully request an aye vote on the measure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ms. Burke, you are recognized. I believe, like my colleague uh, from Oceanside, that we should show love and respect for all people. And so that is why, as a member of the Legislative Black Caucus, I rise in strong support of Assembly Bill 953. Study shows that profiling often occurs due to unconscious or implicit bias about a particular race. This is a practical approach to eliminating racial bias. We must, and I repeat, must, improve the relationship between community colors and law enforcement. I strongly recommend an I vote. Thank you, Ms. Burke. Mr. Thurman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I rise in support of AB 953 as a member of the Legislative Black Caucus and want to thank the author uh, for bringing this forward. You know, there's been some suggestion that, you know, the conversation would only involve groups of people of color. But as I understand from reading the bill, this is a conversation for everyone in all of our communities. And it, it says 
that the race and gender and other classifications of all people pulled over would be reported, not people of color. So to the suggestion that there is not a place for people from all groups to be included, uh, I, you know, with all due respect to that notion, I, I read differently, and that there is a place for all. This is not a bill to attack law enforcement. Uh, you know, it's important for us to work with our law enforcement communities as well, and many of our law enforcement leaders have been leading to help address these issues. By my count, this is something that will help us to create a step in the right direction to improve the very strained relationships between law enforcement and many people of color in our community, and I urge your I vote on 953. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Mr. Cooley, you were recognized. Colleagues, I'm pleased to rise in support of this measure. Uh, this does speak to an issue of great tension in our, in our country. There are strong opinions on both sides. Uh, but I just want to say I think this body should pass this measure. We should send it forward. The, the conversation should not be stopped here. You know, we stand in the presence of this portrait of Lincoln that was painted by William Cogswell in the last year of our president's life. He stands composed in the midst of great controversy. He himself exhibiting leadership to try to understand how we pull our community, our nation back together. Um, his great presence in the Lincoln Memorial, you know, his hands rest on a chair and his hands rest on sort of this, these bundle of sticks. If you conjure up that image of Abraham Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial, his hands rest there, one a clenched fist, one an open hand, both resting on a bundle of sticks bound together. That is the one symbol, as I've said before, that is in our state capitol. It's carved in the monumental staircase here. It's in every cast iron lamp all over the capitol grounds. A couple feet off the ground, you'll see what looks like a ring. It's a bundle of sticks bound together. Colleagues, we are strong when we can stand together composed to face challenges and controversies of our era. This is an important issue. It's not to say we are but one body. This bill will proceed. It will very likely encounter further discussion in the Senate, amendments. It will come back to us. But I think this body should be able to say this is an important conversation and one that befits this body to further. I'm grateful for my colleague who has authored this. I think it is it is right to side with the angels. Um, Abraham Lincoln, in his second inaugural address in January, a month before he died, could speak of the fact that when he looked at this nation and this threat that it would come apart, fly apart in that great war, he said we can, he could see cords that connected every, he said, patriot's grave and battlefield that the forge out of which our nation was formed, he said you can look at all these people who've died for this nation and see as if cords that date back to those battlefields, to those patriots who died for what America stands for. And he envisioned it almost like a harp. He said these mystic cords of memory that I believe in due course, he said, the angels of our better nature would produce a harmony. It's, it's sort of an esoteric symbol Harp music is not what we listen to today, but he could see in the history of America the sacrifices made to produce this nation, to bring it together, could produce harmony even in contentious times. I think this is that sort of bill, trying to grapple with something, trying to be composed in the midst of strife and advance a conversation. I think it's a worthy cause, and I'm pleased to rise in support of it. Mr. McCarty, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also arise in support of this measure. Certainly as a member of the Black Caucus, I support my colleague from San Diego. But more importantly, I want to talk about as a city council member here in Sacramento for a decade. You know, right about the time that I was elected, the city council in Sacramento adopted a racial profiling ordinance which required two things. One, data collection, and two, a commission to analyze the data on a yearly basis. There was extreme opposition from our local law enforcement. They thought it would be terrible. As years went by, they actually thought it brought about a nice discussion on the issue and brought about more transparency and public trust. And I think this approach is the same thing. I think this will bring a needed approach to the, to the issue in California, and I think this is a smart measure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarty. Ms. Gonzalez, you are recognized. 
I, I, I'm rising in support today because I want to make sure that people understand this is not just a black issue. As many of us who live in Latino neighborhoods, it is absolutely a Latino issue as well. And driving while black or brown, we've known for a long time anecdotally is an issue. We talk about in our communities as if it were fact, and yet when we try to present that to others, we're asked, where's the proof? This is what we need to show the rest of the world the proof. Should it be necessary? No, we know it happens. But I'll say as far as a burden on, on the officers, this has been in place in San Diego for years. It's not an additional burden. We just need to enforce and ensure that this data is collection, that we can refer to something, and so we can actually address a problem that we know exists. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Mr. Gibson, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, as a member of the Legislative Black Caucus, I rise in support of Assembly Bill 953 for all the reasons that have already been stated, and I will uh, not be redundant. I think this is a good um, bill before us today. I think our communities, certainly we live in a community that has demanded um, some accountability and doing something different that has, t that has not taken place. And I think this is a very good sense approach in terms of accomplishing that and also giving the communities um, in which we represent some side for security to let them know that the policymakers, the leaders are supporting and hearing their voices. Thank you very much. I ask when I vote. Debate having ceased. Dr. Weber, you may close. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, first of all, let me thank all of my colleagues, those who provided good information, good questions, and great concerns for the state of California. To my colleague who raised the issue of the composition of the committee, uh, part of the issue was uh, to ensure diversity on the committee. If you look at the various entities that are there, you could have a committee without the diversity if you don't actually target and identify the various caucuses who have a particular interest. Those items are items that we can continue to talk about, but that's really designed to ensure diversity and some level of legislative input into this particular process. We should never be afraid of data. I'm not sure what people think data is going to do. Data may prove that there is no racial profiling of any significance in California if we had the data. Right now, all we have are the tragedies, the stories that come out, that pop out on a regular basis, that many argue have been there for years, but they become media circuses now because people have cell phones and they can record things that didn't weren't recorded before. We should never be afraid of data. Because if we're going to be policymakers and we're going to talk about bringing change, it should be based on factual information and not anecdotal comments about who thinks something happened or did not happen. This is something that addresses every Californian, every section of this nation. We should be concerned. We should be outraged over the things that's happening across this country. And many of you have expressed that outrage in various forms over the past, past year itself in terms of our concern about what it means to be a person of color or a woman or a different religion or whatever it may be in this state and whether or not we're being targeted as a result of it. How do we know that if we don't get the data? How do we develop policy if we don't have the data? How do we arm ourselves in our communities to be better if we don't really understand the nature of the problem itself? How do we know if it's happening only at night or only in the morning because the data tells us the time frame? How do we know if it's happening only to those who are old versus those who are young or vice versa? How do we know that it's only happening on certain stretches of a road if we don't have the data? How do we begin to address this very critical problem if we don't have the data? Some assume that the data is going to prove that certain people are wrong. It may prove that certain people are right, that there have been searches and, they, and people have followed protocol. But we must have the data. This is the minimum we can do for the people of California. All of us have been confronted over the last year with the challenges we face in this nation, being a person of color. And these challenges have existed forever. And so we know that. As I've pointed out in various committees, my father, my son, my grandfather, all of those individuals have been affected by what has been often seen as racial profiling. All of them have been sometimes a victim of injustices in this country as a result of simply who they are, where they were. I've been stopped and I'm a female over small things and because I was in, quote, the wrong community, as some people thought, but it was a community that I actually lived in. And so as a result of that, we find this as a part of life. When do we stop the cycle? When will we say enough is enough in this country? When do we step forward and do the most modest thing, which is to collect data? The world is looking at California. We normally lead. We don't follow. This is an effort to lead in an area that we are deficient in, which is the area of data collection. I ask that you look at it very seriously, that you take it seriously, because it really is. This is not just any ordinary bill. 
This is a bill that would at least begin us on the path to heal our communities, to improve our law enforcement if there are issues, to also instruct our communities if there aren't issues, because our communities may discover that our officers are better and that there's only such a tiny, small percentage of those who are not following the law. We should never be afraid of data. It should drive us to improve ourselves, and this is the minimum we can do given the crisis that we face. I asked everyone to look carefully inside themselves and to realize that AB 953 is really about you, the future of California, and what we want to do to build a state that we know is a great state, a diverse state, that ensures the security of everyone in this nation. I respectfully ask for an I vote for 953. Thank you, Dr. Weber. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk, all members vote who desire to vote. All members vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote. Ayes 41, no's 23. Measure passes. Members, I'm going to move very briefly back to guest introductions. And on behalf of Assemblywoman Gaines, we welcome her father and mother in law, Bob and Winnie Gaines, as well as her sister in law, Margaret Gaines, on the in the back of the chamber on the assembly floor. We welcome them to the assembly. Members, we are taking up bills authored by budget conferees. Back on the file. We're going to move to bills authored by Mr. Gomez, starting with file item 49. That's AB 1205, file item 49, AB 1205. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1205 by Assemblymember Gomez and Actor Lane DeRivers. Mr. Gomez, you may open. Mr. Speaker and members, today I'm presenting Assembly Bill 1205, which will establish the Cal River Program, which will be a grant program administered by the Natural Resources Agency. This competitive grant program will be used to fund projects on or adjacent to riparian corridors. These projects will achieve the goal of greenhouse gas emission reduction by incentivizing projects that integrate stormwater, natural resources improvements, and reduction of vehicle miles traveled. Developing projects with co-beneficial uses along California's more than 46,000 miles of rivers furthers the goal outlined in AB 32 and confirms the value of our natural resource system. I ask for your I vote. See no discussion or debate on this item. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll and tally the vote. I 63, nose 2, measure passes.